Hello everybody, welcome to the course VLSI Design Flow RTL2 GDS. This is the tutorial for the ninth week. In this tutorial, we'll be looking into power analysis. Specifically, in the objective of this tutorial is to gain a hands-on experience on power analysis using open source tool OpenSTA. So, the requirements for this tutorial is that first we should have OpenSTA installed on our system. So, the installation and how to run OpenSTA was described in tutorial 7. So, if you have not yet installed uh, OpenSTA, please install it by taking help of tutorial 7. Then we will be needing the following files, the design file test.v, script file test.tickle, the SDC file test.sdc and the technology library toy.lib. So, all these files are available on the NPTEL website as study material for week 9. So, you can download those th these files and use it for your experiments. Now, in this tutorial, we will be covering the concepts of power analysis. So, power analysis was discussed in lecture 29. So, let us first recap uh, the concepts of power analysis, then we will be carrying out the experiments. Now, given a CMOS circuit, there are two major components of power, uh, uh, power dissipation. The first is the dynamic power dissipation and the second is leakage power dissipation or static power dissipation. Now, the uh, that power analysis tool basically divides the dynamic power dissipation into two components and what are they? The first is the internal power component and the second one is the external power component, right? So, the internal power dissipation is basically the power dissipated within a cell, right? So, the, this, uh, the internal power dissipation can occur because of internal capacitances within the cell which are charging and discharging and also due to the short circuit uh, uh, current that flows during the when the current when when a cell switches its state right and the external uh, power dissipation is basically decided by the external capacitances which are charged and discharged when a logic gate transitions right so this, uh, these these uh, external capacitances can be wire load or the pin load which are being driven by a particular cell right and uh, the, uh, in the internal power uh, dissipation component that is the uh, modeled in the uh, in the uh, model in technology library as nonlinear power model. So, we have seen nonlinear power model that it models internal power as that uh, uh, in terms of uh, or as a function of uh, input slew or input transition and the output load and uh, output load or the load capacitance, right? So, uh, it is modeled as two dimensional table as we will be seeing in today's tutorial. Now, let us run OpenSTA and examine how power analysis is done by the tool. So, let us first check whether we have all the necessary files. So, we have the SDC file, the tickle file, the Verilog file and the, and the library. So, we have all the necessary files. Now, let us see the uh, see the design file, right, test.v. So, in the design file, we have uh, one module, right, the top and it has got two ports, one input port A and output port out and it has got only one instance and that of an inverter. So, the INV is the name of the cell which will be present in the technology library and I1 is the name of the instance. So, we have taken very simple design so that we can understand the various components of power dissipation. Now, let us look at the SDC file that what constraints are we applying to our design, right? So, we are applying a clock, right? And its period is 1000 picosecond and then we are specifying input and output delay of 5, uh, five picosecond at the input ports A and the output port out and we are specifying the input transition or input slew as 
0 0.1 right at input port A and we are specifying load or output capacitance at the output port out and its value is 0 0.1 uh, library units that is 0 0.1 femto per hour in this case. Now let us look into the script file or tickle file that we are going to run. So in, the, uh, in this tutorial what we will first do is that we read the library twy.lib, then we read the design test.v and then link the instances of the, uh, of the uh, design that is i1 or inverter with the cell in the library twy.lib. Then we will read the sdc file test.sdc, then we set the power activity right. So, when the dynamic power dissipation depends on uh, the, uh, how, how frequent the switching is occurring in our circuit. So, to compute uh, dynamic power dissipation tool will, know, uh, will need, to, uh, need, need to know the activity of the signals right. So, if we do not specify tool can assume default activity. In this case we are saying that the activity is 0.1 right and then we ask the tool to report the power right. Now, let us run the run the tool right open open sta tool right. So, the since the tool is already installed on my machine I can run simply as sta right. So, the tool in uh, the uh, tool open sta is run and now we say source test dot tickle. So, we are running the script file right. So, the, the when we do source test dot tickle all the commands that I have shown reading the very log file reading the library linking and reading the sdc file all will be done right and finally it is reporting the power right we had written the command report power and the power is being reported here right now the tool has reported four columns related to power right the first one is internal power the second one is switching power right and third one is leakage power and then the total power right now let us understand that how did the tool compute the internal power as 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 and the unit is watt right. So, this information of internal power as I said comes from the library right. So, we need to open the library I am exiting the tool and opening the library twy.lib to get the information that what information was derived from the library by the tool to report the internal power right. So, we open the file twy.lib right. So, now I go to the cell inv right. So, inv this is the cell right that was instantiated in our design and we see that there is a pin output pin zn right and for this zn there is internal power is, is uh, arc is here right. So, there is an internal power arc and the related pin is i. So, the power arc is pin i and z n right and what are the values of the power dissipation. So, there are five fall power and rise power is specified separately and there the values are specified here and at what slew and load these powers are these numbers are reported that is defined in power template right. So, now we have to go to this power template right which is at, at the top of this file right. So, I go at to the top of this file and see the template power template right. So, in the power template it is written that input transition time is there right and its value is 0 0.1 and 100 library units and total output uh, net capacitance or output load is 0 0.1 and 100 right. So, there are two characterization point for the slew and two characterization point for the load right. So, this is a toy library therefore, there are only two characterization points in typical library there will be say 8 characterization point for uh, for slew and 8 for uh, for uh, load and so on that is so it will be multiple characterization points will be there. But since this is a toy library there is one there are only 4 characterization points right and what are the values. So, uh, to know the values we have to go to the cell inv right this is the cell inv and we see the value. So, the value is 1, 2, 3, 4 for the fall case and 2, 4, 6, 10 as for the rise case right. Now, corresponding to these values we can draw a table for easy understanding and I have drawn that and the table will look something like this right. 
So, the table, uh, table contains 1, 2, 3, 4 right? and the, the rows, uh, the transition or slew are all along the rows and load is loads are along the call. Right? So, 1, 2, 3, 4 for the fall case and 2, 4, 6, 10 for the rise case. Right? Now, which of these values will be used? Now, the values that, that will be used for internal power computation will come from the circuit condition. And in circuit, we have specified the constraint as 0.1 slew at the input port, right? In the SDC file, we had written that. And 0.1 femtofarad for the load, right? So we had uh, used the command set load during the specifying the constraint, right? So, Corresponding to 0.1 slew and 0.1 load, load, we have to see the uh, see the first row and first column. So the fall value is one and the rise value is two, right? Now the values that are reported in a nonlinear power model, those correspond to energy consumed per transition. Those are not the power numbers. Those are basically the energy consumed per transition. That number is reported. Right? Now, say, uh, if we take the average of these two, so the average energy consumed per, per transition will be 1 plus 2 divided by 2, that is 1.5 and the unit of energy in the library is, a point, uh, is femtojoule. So, the average energy con consumed per transition is 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 15 joule. Right? We have converted femtojoule to joule. Then in the SDC file, we had specified that the clock period is 1000 picosecond, right? And if we want to find the number of clock cycles per second, then we will just take the reciprocal of the clock period, right? So it will turn out to be 10 to the power 9, right? Now the activity we had specified in the tickle file, right? So the, from the activity, what is activity? The activity is number of transitions per clock cycle and we had defined its value to be 0.1, right? So, the number of transitions per second will be 0.1 into number of clock cycles per second, right? So, 0.1 into 10 to the power 9. So, now we, we can compute the internal power as energy per transition, right? Which is 1.5 into 10, 10 to the power minus 15 into number of transitions per second, which is 0.1 into 10 to the power 9. So, we will get 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 watts, right? And this is what was reported in the by the 2, right? 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 watts. Now, let us understand that how did the tool compute the switching power as 5 into 10 to the power minus 9 watt, right? So, the switching power consumption is much easier, right? So it is uh, uh, to compute the switching power computation. The tool must know the load, load at the uh, load driven by a cell, right? So in this case, we had specified the load using the set load command. Its value was 0.1 femtofarad, right? And we are assuming that there is no wire load, right, and no other pin load because it is it is just driving driving the output port directly, right. So whatever the load we have specified, that is the load being driven by this uh, by by this uh, uh, inverter, right. And here uh, and therefore and the voltage that we that was specified in the library was one volt for this cell, right. So we can compute the energy dissipated in one transition, right, when one change happens then the energy energy uh, energy dissipated is half cv square the energy that was stored in the capacitor right half cv square so if we uh, uh, compute half cv square using c is equal to 0.1 femtofarad and voltage as 1 volt we'll get it the value as 5 into 10 to the power minus 17 joule right now this is the energy right to get the switching power we have to multiply it with the number of transitions per second and we have already computed number of transition per second as 0.1 into 10 to the power 9, right? So we multiply the energy per transition with number of transition per second, we get 5 into 10 to the power minus 9 watt, which was reported by the tool, right? 1.5, sorry, 5 into 10 to the power minus 9, right? Now, the third component is the leakage power, 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 10 is reported by the tool. How did the tool compute? 
So, the tool computed this by looking at the library. So, let us look into the library. So, in the library there is uh, there is a statement right cell leakage power for the inverter. So, there is the inverter INV for the INV inverter the cell leakage power is 150 va the value is 150 in library units and what is the library unit for leakage power? It is specified at the top right in the header. So, library leakage power unit is 1 picopower right. So, it is 150 picowatt that is what the leakage power is. So, if we convert 1 picowatt sorry 150 picowatt into what it will come out to be 1.5 into 10 power minus 10 watt which is reported by the tool right. So, and then finally what the tool does is that it adds all these three numbers to get the total power dissipated in the circuit right. So, this completes the tutorial. So, let me summarize what we have done in this tutorial. So, in this tutorial we have uh, used the open STA tool to compute the power uh, power or do the uh, power analysis and then using various information such as information from the library we understood that how the tool did the power analysis right. Now, in this tutorial we have taken a very simple circuit or a trivial circuit consisting just of just an inverter. To so, we have done so, so that we can easily illustrate that how power analysis is done. Now, when the circuit is big the same concepts applied, but in that case we will have more cells and the power compu uh, computation will be more complicated. So, I will suggest that you play with various uh, designs right, you can write test.v yourself, you then add more instances, you can change the constraints SDC file by changing the clock period right and the input transition and load and see that how the power analysis changes and uh, and we can also change the activity factor in the uh, in the uh, in the tickle file right so i will suggest that you do those experiments so that you can un understand power analysis in depth thank you very much